Hi there. In this lecture, we see an absolutely out of this world game. So this is game three of the 2017 match. So Alpha Zero is playing with the white pieces against Stockfish eight. We see Knight F3, Knight F6, C4, and we get a Queen's engine defense position. So E6 and now G3. Bishop A6, Queen C2, and now C5. And in fact, we have now D5. This is a really very interesting move. We have E takes, C takes, Bishop B7. If Knight takes D5, we can punish this with Queen E4 check. So if Knight E7, we can take on A8. And the Queen's not really a prisoner there. We can play E3 instead of Bishop G2 to challenge the A6 Bishop. And this position, we can actually break the Queen out later if needed. So for example, this position, we have Rook takes D7. There's no easy way for Black to trap the Queen. We're going to get her out with advantage here in this kind of scenario. So okay, we have Bishop B7 being played. And this represents a pawn sacrifice in the opening. So Bishop G2, Knight takes D5. So it's interesting. A whole pawn sacrifice and for what? If bishop takes d5, this is quite fascinating. If knight c3, let's say bishop c6, white has a certain pressure in the center here. For example, this position, it's difficult to have plans for black. White's got quite a bind on the position. There's a lot of pressure for the pawn. And if we look at also bishop e6, we can go with knight e5, looking at a8, and this is dangerous for black. For example, this position, knight a6, we can actually play a3 here. Forget taking, because that would actually be even. We can actually play a3, and this is just positionally, again, quite dominating. We do have the resource knight c6 before black is able to cancel, and then this would actually win material. So there are very, very interesting options emerging here but knight takes d5 was chosen we have e4 sorry we have white castling e4 is tempting but the white king's in the center so here we have white castling knight c6 rook d1 bishop e7 and you might ask hold on isn't d5 hanging no if rook takes d5, there's knight b4, forking queen and rook. And this is not enough pressure for black, for you know, not enough compensation. There's bishop f6 here, as an example. That would be better for black. So we actually have queen f5 instead. So the threat here is now queen takes d5, like this. We have the knight going to f6, e4, g6. Now this does weaken black on the dark squares. A bit and you know it's quite a committal move if black had castled e5 knight e8 this position we can threaten rook takes d7 here this is a calm move forget rook takes d7 immediately but we can just play like this for example or rook takes d7 white's just better so okay g6 so getting the queen away from d7 so queen f4 we have black casting e5, knight h5, queen g4, rook e8, knight c3. And now we have queen b8, knight d5, bishop f8. If knight takes e5 instead, you might ask, there's knight takes e5, queen takes e5, and knight takes e7 check. And look, we've got the attack against the bishop winning material. So bishop f8 was played. We have bishop f4 and now queen c8, so protecting d7. If knight takes f4, white well, can do better than taking on f4. White well, can actually slip in knight f6 check and can do better than knight takes e8. White well, can play this and this is a very strong attack. For example, queen h3, h6, this position, there's all sorts of attacking options emerging. For example, queen's Queen coming to c3 check and knight f6 check. This position is check and white's just absolutely winning this. This position, knight going back, queen h3, and it's 
an unstoppable attack, basically. So yes, bad things happen, checkmate. So knight takes f4 is a bad idea, and that's kind of weakness of the last move if we can pounce into f6 and exploit the king's safety issues in a nutshell. So queen c8, h3, knight e7, knight e3, we have bishop c6, rook d6, knight g7, rook f6. And now here, according to modern stockfish, like 15, this is a mistake. <laughs> Black should try just to repeat with knight h5. And maybe white should play rook d6 and allow a repetition. But with queen b7, yes, all of a sudden this goes in white's favour now. We have bishop h6, knight d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, rook d1, knight e6. Bishop, uh, the exchange of bishops which weakens black's dark squares a bit further. Queen h4, bishop c6. So the queen installs herself on h6 quite menacingly. Rook a to e8, rook d6, and now we have bishop takes f3. So bishop takes f3, queen a6, h4, queen a5. If queen takes a2, you might ask, it's a dangerous attack after h5. This position, h takes as example, and here, if queen b1 checked this position with h takes, we have rook takes d7 and bishop d5, and we're going to play bishop takes e6. And look at this the rook's helping the queen on h7 in the variations. So this is winning for white. So, for example, rook takes, rook takes, and then mate. Okay, so queen a5, we have rook d1, c4, and this actually gives white that c4 square, which is important sometimes. The d4 square, which is important sometimes. So that's an interesting subtle weakening move. Not not now, but we'll see that in variations. So rook d5, check, king g2, c3. This is taken, queen takes c3, h5. Rook e7, bishop d1. Now the bishop is transferring to this diagonal. Even though it seems obstructed, there's a point to this. There's a method to the madness coming up. Queen e1, bishop b3. There's actually a very subtle threat here. Can you see what white is threatening? It's very, very subtle. Okay, white is actually threatening rook d4, believe it or not. So as example, if a5, rook d4, knight takes d4, we have h takes because of that bishop pinning f7. And this position, we're crushing it, we're checkmating. So it's you know, super dangerous. If queen e4 check, f3 is possible. And yeah, this is just going to be better for white. For example, this position, we're going to end up winning material. So okay, there's a, there's a really amazing subtle threat of rook d4 here. Beautiful stuff where the rook can also you know, sometimes come round like this as well. Now, okay, so black tries rook d8 which actually gives the king an escape square. It's not just about protecting d7 more, it's about giving the king an escape square. We have now rook f3. So if rook d4, this is subtly different, black can actually play queen takes e5, and this position, if white's best is rook takes e6, yeah, this is not convincing. Black's just better. If rook h4, queen takes f6, we're not mating with queen h7 because the king's got f8 there. So black's got the advantage here. So yes, that wasn't giving the king a key escape square. So rook f3. Instead, we have queen e4, queen d2, queen g4, bishop d1, queen e4. So if queen takes h5, we would just play rook takes f7, hitting the queen. So queen e4, we have h6 installing what I call a form pawn, T-H-O-R-N. And we see form pawns quite frequently in neural network games, whether it's Alpha Zero or the later open source neural network, the Leela project. Form pawns are a fascinating thing. And here it's absolutely fascinating what it what's it it's it's profound effects. So knight c7, we have rook d6, knight e6, bishop b3. So not minding about the e5 pawn, rook d5, and the queen goes to h8. This looks 
ridiculous. If queen a1, we can actually obstruct the queen from that diagonal and now, believe it or not, play rook d4. And the threat is actually, yeah, what does black do in this situation? So say b5, we can take on e6 and rook c1 actually is trapping the queen. Black would have to give up the queen. So it's not even about getting on that diagonal, it's about just winning the queen there. If we look at this again, if knight takes d4, we do get on that diagonal. Look at the form pawn, amazing form pawn. It's just winning. Goal hanging pawn, so very, very interesting. So we have queen h8, <laughs> queen b4, and this is amazing now what's happening here. We have knight c5. White play, this is an absolutely stunning sequence to say the least. So white actually sacrifices the exchange and you might wonder for what? So for queen h4, so skewing the rooks, limiting black's replies severely and black has to be careful about f7. And now taking the opportunity to imprison the black queen yeah, <laughs> this is like a blockade of the queen, basically. And it's really just restraining emphatically the black position. We have rook f8. So is this worth the exchange? Well, it does seem quite good. If rook e6, we can take on e6 and just play rook takes e6 here. And look at that form pawn with queen e7. We're threatening queen e8. Look at that dangerous form pawn. It's a profound influence. For attacking prospects in the variations. And if you know f takes e6, queen f4, and we're actually just gonna play, for example, here, we're gonna play queen b3 check, and that's crushing on the diagonal. This position we're crushing it. And if instead of e5 there, if c4, queen d4, g4, we can totally imprison the queen again cheaply and then this position is just crushing wonderful stuff so rook f8 is played we have queen f4 a5 g4 d5 if a4 we can actually ignore that keep the bishop on this diagonal and if rook e6 trying to sacrifice for some play this is just hopeless g5 and then queen takes a4 and there's very little black can do here. Black's just going to shed material and be put into a zigzag where queen g7 becomes the best move. It's that bad if the rook moves queen takes f7. So we're just taking the queen there. So d5 is tried. Yes, black's falling to bits now. It's a zigzag effect. So a4, g5, a3, queen f3, rook c7, queen takes a3, and now desperate queen takes f6. Absolutely desperate. Yeah, black is just without anything to do. And white, given the chance, will just advance this pawn, make headway with this pawn. So queen takes f6, g takes, rook fc8, queen d3, rook f8, queen d6, rook fc8, a4. And this is the end of the game. Black resigned here. If rook a7, we can advance the pawn. So any time there's rook takes a5 there's queen d7 hit, hitting c8 and f7 as example this this is uh quite crushing there's all sorts of uh, effects here let's put one on the board so here for example bishop takes f7 queen d8 check and we can pick up the rook as example but yeah it's just easy to win when you're a queen up here in this kind of position and this, for example, we can make progress like this, for example. Eventually, black's going to be running into things like queen e7, this position, and the king, because of that form pawn, can't help things. And we're just going to queen one of these pawns with advantage. So an absolutely fascinating out of this game world, out of this world game, <laughs> out of this world game. And... It's fascinating how the queen was made a prisoner. So it's interesting, Nimzovich's concept of blockade is kind of 
put on steroids, so to speak, because in fact the whole of Black, Black's position was blockaded, especially the Queen, just put in prison. If you can put the opponent's position or pieces in prison, you you won't have much to worry about. You'll have a free hand to do things. I think that's one of the big lessons here, that actually we should take imprisonment of pieces and blockade very, very seriously. Nimzvich's point about security in the wider sense of course we can have positional security if we can really completely lock up the opponent's pieces like in this game absolutely amazing stuff i hope you enjoy this as much as me thanks so much all comments questions likes and subscribes really appreciated thanks so much